listen to the adventure on Pumlet on W4CY Radio. Wake up, America! It's time for the adventures of Hype Man on W4CY.com, West Palm Beach's number one internet radio station. Here's your host, the Hype Man. This is the Pipe Man here on the Adventures Pipe Man W4CY Radio, and I'm here with... I am Graham to our American friends, or Graham to our UK friends. <laughs> Connor. Lawrence. And we are Anchor Lane. And you performed here at Frickin' Download Festival. Oh, my Woo! God. What, what is it like, man, after all the insanity of the past few years that you're actually here and played Download Festival? Oh mate, it's just it's just wonderful. It's just it's just great to be here, man. I'm on a wee cloud. We're all on a wee cloud. We've played our set just there, and I think I think I can. If if I die tomorrow, I'd be like, yeah, sounds or yeah, cool, man. And yeah, no, I'm just just very very fulfilled right now. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So tell us a little bit about the experience, how the crowd was. Like, you know, it's been a while, so. You know, you kind of wonder coming into this festival going, well, what's it going to be like after all this time? Yeah, well, we, we weren't sure how it was going to go because um, we're quite a new band, we're quite a young band, and uh, we spent the whole Saturday handing out flyers to people to come and see us. It's so old school, I love yeah, it. Yeah, but you've got to do it, self-promotion. Um, but we, we gave out the flyers, and then, you know, even during our line check, there was, there was a good crowd of about 500 people there. And by the time we were walking on, people are cheering for us to come on. We're like, you don't even know who, who we are. But they're just, I they're just love there for it. it. People are just so gay. Yeah, and from the first song, we were, you know, we're a very energetic band. You know, the first song's really bouncy. People were bouncing along with us and, and just enjoying it. It was just, it was amazing. I love that. And it says a lot, too, for you guys as a band, because here we are, last day of the festival, early playing, People have been partying for two days. For them to actually wake up and come out to your show, that says a lot. Oh, yeah, it, it, it really is awesome. While, while we were handing out the flyers, a lot of people were saying, oh, we'll probably be up at that time. I was like, well, I fucking hope so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that'd be great. So, yeah, and no, it, it's, it's brilliant. And um, as you say, the third day, you're kind of you're expecting a lot of people to be jaded, to be a bit, you know, they've been drinking all weekend. You're thinking, there's probably not going to be a lot of folk there. Everyone was in great voice, everyone's clapping along, jumping. No one was sick, which was fantastic. Um, so yeah, man, it was just, yeah, the energy was, was it blew the roof off. Yeah, I gotta say, if there's a positive we're gonna get out of this COVID thing is maybe people will have a new appreciation of live music, because before, people were, I don't know about here, but in the States, a bunch of entitled, whiny bitches, okay? Like fucking, I can't stand it. They go to a festival, there's 60 bands, and their one band didn't play, and they're like all pissed off. It's like, dude, that's not what a festival's about. A festival's about coming here to see Iron Maiden, and holy fuck, this band Anchor Lane, they're badass. That's what a festival's about. Yeah, totally agree, man. And I think you're right. I think that there was pre, pre-COVID, there was a bit of a, oh, I'll, I'll catch them next time, or oh, do you know what? I'm going to have a night in with Netflix. But then everyone's had too many nights in with Netflix and they're like, I want to go to a fucking gig. I want to bounce and I want to have a good time and I want to forget about all the shit that's going on in the world and just enjoy myself for half an hour, an hour, however long. you know. And I think, I think people did forget about that. I think you've nailed it on the head there. Yeah, and even me, okay? Because I do this for work, but I do it because I love it too. And I'm the first one that'll be out there in the pit and shit when I'm done working. And I remember in the fall in the U.S., we started doing festivals. And at first, I was like institutionalized. You know that feeling. First show I went to, I was backstage. I was looking out at the crowd. I'm like, 
that looks like a Petri dish to me. Fuck that. I'm not going out there. And then finally, when I got a little feeling better, I was seeing that one festival in the middle of like 100,000 people. And I just remember saying to myself, man, I feel live. You know? Yeah, like live music should not have been gone. Yeah, well, perhaps just personally speaking, but maybe for, for all of us as well, just watching Iron Maiden, you know, and they put on a spectacular show, especially for how long they've been doing it. And that feeling of being alive that you describe is, is kind of how we felt. And it was just kind of like, like to be honest, Iron Maiden are not a band that I really listened to. That They were a band in my teen years, but watching them was just like surreal and amazing. And just like you made ends in your life meet. Yeah. And I think that the cool thing is that everyone's game here. Like everyone's so game for like, you know, bands like us that are, are, you know, on the smaller stages on the smaller scale and then bands that are, you know, completely, you know, irre- irreplaceable and legendary. And like everything in between, people are just so happy to see it, so grateful to see it. There's there's no prejudice and every, everyone, I'd say on average, everyone here is just a good kind of person. I love it. There's I love lot, it. There's a lot to be there's a lot of good things going on here. Kind of, it restores your faith in humanity a little bit. You yeah. Know, you mentioned petri dishes. You know, sometimes you just got to look a little bit closer at the petri dish, and suddenly you see all the life. You know. Yeah. And uh, that's kind of it. You know, we we were looking out, thinking of oh, blind check, not a lot of people there. You jump on, and as Connor said, you've got thousands shouting your name, and these are the same thousands of people that are shouting for Iron Maiden. Right. And you know, you're you're sitting as, as a young guy, you're dreaming of this. You're dreaming of being on even the same lineup as these as all these guys, and then you're you're playing on the same the same festival as them and as, as Bruce Dickinson said last night everyone that's there fucking deserves to enjoy themselves because it's been two and a half to three years or however long it's been of, of shit yeah. and as you said I think people are, are bouncing back I mean you've seen reactions out there you know yeah. with, with everyone it seems to be it, it's properly back and moving again I, and I love it I, I was at the point during the pandemic that I'm like I don't give a fuck if there's a five year a fifth grader Getting up on stage, playing a recorder, I'm going to that live show. <laughs> I'm going to every recital in every high school in town. <laughs> totally. And, you know, it's interesting because you're talking about the smaller stages. In my opinion, those are the better stages a lot of times. First of all, you find new bands that you like. Number two, it's more intimate. I remember the first time I went to a club show. It was Motley Crue before they even had an album. Before they were glam, they were like horror punk. And they like tried to light the Roxy on the Sunset Strip on fire to bring Satan in. And I was like, I'm never going to a real concert ever again. Oh, I was there. I was there. And it was like, from then on, throughout the, the 80s, I was at the Sunset Strip like every weekend catching a show every night. And it was like, Because it's a different experience. We had Megadeth play yesterday. I was at Metallica's first show ever. And there were like 25 of us at the Troubadour. And Dave Mustaine gets off stage afterwards. Because that's what happened back in the day. And especially, they were nobody. Nobody knew who they were. They were my age. You know? And and he gets off and he just starts talking to me. And he hands me his business card. It said, Metallica, Power Metal. There was no... still have it. I wish. Oh, man. Like, I, I so wish, because it's so classic. And when, and when I interviewed Dave, I would want to pull it out and say, yeah, remember that, this? That would be so cool. Uh, yeah. Right? Because it, be it said Metallica Power Metal, Dave Mustaine. That, and that was before thrash metal was even a word. Yeah, no, it, it didn't coined, exist. It, it wasn't coined. Cause it, was, it, was it Kerrang or something that like put a, a, that name to it, kind of put those bands in that I category. think, but you know what happened? Okay, so I interviewed Udo Dirk Schneider about two months ago from Accept, and Dan Spitz, fr- formerly guitarist from Anthrax, is a good friend of mine. So was, he called me up one day, and I told him, hey, I just got done doing an interview with Udo, and we were talking about Fast as a Shark, because basically how I learned about Accept I went to see Ozzy with Randy Rhodes on New Year's Eve. And it, it was one of those gigs where I told my dad that I was sleeping over my friend's house. And he told his parents he was sleeping over my house. And we went to Ozzy. And then, you know, I lived on, my house was up here and you went down a hill to the lake. So we were just sitting on the lake, you know, because I couldn't go home yet. My next door name, or unbeknownst to me, the wife comes out and she's like, 
hey, you boys, did you go to Ozzy last night? And we're like, yeah. And she's like, wait right there. Don't go anywhere. I want to get my husband. Husband comes out, invites us up to the house, brings, him in, brings us inside. He has a studio. It's wall-to-wall cassette tapes. Turns out he's Ozzy's promoter. Like right next door, I'm like, holy fucking, gives us all this swag. But he pulls a cassette out of the wall and he says, listen to this. This band isn't here yet. They'll be here in six months. And they're from Germany. And it was Accept. And I remember turning on Fast as a Shark and going, oh my freaking God. And Dan says to me, he goes, that's what started thrash metal. That was the first thrash metal song. He said, we heard that, and we're like, it was the first guitarist ever to do the up-down, because, you know, you learned how to play guitar strumming down. I like how you pointed to make it me there when you (laughs) mentioned alternate picking. I'm only ever going to point at you when they start talking about picking, because I know nothing. (laughs) Fair enough. So there you go, and it was like you learned, when you learned guitar back then, you only learned the downstroke, and fast as a shark, they were doing the down and up, and... Dan's like, we were like, what the fuck? We need to learn how to do that. And that's how thrash metal started right there. Did your parents ever find out? No, not till I was adult and told them. (laughs) You know? Yeah, can't listen, my dad was partying too much to know anyway. (laughs) So tell us what you got going on after download. Well, we just announced our album call this a reality so that is now available to pre-order um, so I, I suppose the next thing will be starting the pre-order campaign releasing some singles uh, and uh, yeah I think I think we do have some some support slots on, on some some tours I'll try and say that again on some tours um, but we have not been made aware of what they are yet so hopefully that will be getting announced soon on our socials I think actually a little break is nice because we have had a um an extremely busy oh, yeah. six, seven months. Behind the scenes, it's been, oof. You know, we've worked a lot writing and, you know, creating this album and uh, there's been a, you know, kind of other stuff happening in the background. So for us to finally just get a little break and a breather before we can attack this new album campaign. So I think we'll just enjoy the rest of today and, and chill out for a bit. That's that's a good thing. So you're mentioning socials. Tell everybody your socials, your website and everything. And most importantly, listeners, especially after the past couple of years. You want these bands to play, you want to have your entertainment, buy their merch. That's the only way they'll survive. Please do. So you can find us, we're Anchor Lane on uh, Facebook, we're Anchor Lane Official on Instagram and TikTok, and, and our website is anchorlanemusic.com. You can pre-order our album there, you can buy our merch. Please do. We're very, very hungry. <laughs> <laughs> lost a lot of weight which you know, might not always be a bad thing but yeah we need money for food yeah like you were 400 pounds before the pandemic yeah. right yeah 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 yeah. 400 pounds before the set we just played yeah. <laughs> I love it shark I can finally fit into something. I love it well you guys are amazing everybody make sure to support them thanks a lot for playing at download and thanks for being on the adventures of pipe man thank you for having us thank you so much Thank you for listening to the Adventures of Pipe Man on W4CY Radio.